At the end of Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, we were introduced to the second starship to bear the name Enterprise. As her hull registry was NCC-1701A, she became known as the Enterprise A. But given the timeline of events in the fourth Star Trek film, as well as those of the film preceding it, there is not enough time for the second ship to have been built. So the question is, where did she come from? In this video, we will look at three theories behind the origins of the Enterprise A. But first, we need a little context. In Star Trek III The Search for Spock, Starfleet clearly have it in for the Enterprise. The battered capital ship is to be denied a refit. Admiral Morrow, whose first name is not given but I really would like it to be Tom, states that the Enterprise is 20 years old. The chronology as it was understood in 1984, the year Star Trek III was released, had the Enterprise at 18 years old. This was supported by film dialogue in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, during which James Kirk states that he has not seen Khan for 15 years. The episode Space Seed was broadcast in 1967, during the first season of the original series, 15 years before the release of The Wrath of Khan. The revised chronology presented by publications such as the Star Trek Encyclopedia, a reference guide to the future, and generally accepted by both the fandom and Star Trek producers, has the events of Star Trek III taking place in 2285, and Space Seed in 2267, 18 years, just like the 1984 chronology. But then added to this are the events of the first pilot episode, The Cage, set in 2254. This adds a further 13 years to the age of the Enterprise. If five-year missions were the norm for Enterprise captains, then Christopher Pike must have captained for two such missions. After all, Mr. Spock claimed to have served with him for 11 years. And then there is the semi-canonical Captain Robert T. April, the Enterprise's first commanding officer, who took her out on one five-year mission not long after her launch. According to the encyclopedia, that launch was in 2245, making the Enterprise 40 years old. Elderly for an ocean-going ship, let alone a space-going starship with so many light-years on the clock. Why are we pondering over the age of the Enterprise, you might ask? Well, if the Enterprise is 40 years old, then the attitude of Starfleet Command makes considerably more sense. The gravitational stresses on the Enterprise's space frame, even with a major midlife refit, would seriously compromise her effectiveness and she would have to be retired. Given her fame, we could expect the Enterprise to be decommissioned and turned into a museum ship, rather like HMS Victory. This brings us to our first theory. Could it be that Starfleet intended the elderly starship to be replaced by a new Enterprise? If so, it would make more sense for that replacement starship to belong to the new Excelsior class, rather than to the older Constitution II class. Even though the USS Saratoga of the Voyage Home was eventually succeeded by another USS Saratoga, NCC 31911 of Deep Space Nine, and both were virtually the same class. So perhaps this is not so far-fetched an idea. Yet this theory is not very satisfactory. If they planned to replace the Enterprise, then surely Starfleet would be thick with rumours of it. James Kirk, as an admiral, would know about it. And yet, there is no word of this replacement starship in the search for Spock. Could Starfleet have been deliberately keeping the construction of her a secret as a surprise? Do admiralties go in for pleasantly surprising their admirals? This strikes me as being highly unlikely. In the 1987 reference book, Mr. Scott's Guide to the Enterprise, by Shane Johnson, the author states that the Enterprise A was originally the USS Taiho, NCC-1798. She was under construction during the events of The Search for Spock, and undergoing her deep space trials during the voyage home. 
The Taiho had not been a refit constitution class like the Enterprise, but built from the keel up. According to Shane Johnson, it was this truly new starship that was renamed Enterprise. This is lent credence by the comment in Montgomery Scott's log about this new ship in Star Trek V The Final Frontier. The malfunctioning starship that had apparently broken down not long after the closing credits of the voyage home might well be a very new ship in need of a shakedown cruise. This is a kinder theory than our third theory, which we will come to shortly. But it does not explain why the Enterprise A was decommissioned at the end of Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, after only seven years of space travel. Our third theory is that the Enterprise A was originally the USS Yorktown, NCC 1717. The Yorktown was a contemporary sister of the Enterprise, and so of similar age to the Enterprise, a good 40 years, as we have already established. The Yorktown was to rendezvous with the Enterprise in the second season episode Obsession, which is dated to 2268 by the Star Trek Encyclopedia. This would explain the decommissioning of the Enterprise A at the conclusion of Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, as the ex-Yorktown, she too was over 40 years old. Yet this is an unkind theory. We see the captain of the Yorktown in the voyage home, in a message to Starfleet in which he reports that his chief engineer is rigging a solar sail. If the Enterprise A really was the Yorktown, then it seems a smack in the face for the Yorktown's captain. He managed to bring his ship home, only for Starfleet to take his ship away from him so she could be renamed and given to someone else. This would be true for the chief engineer and the bridge crew too, all of whom presumably worked like heroes to bring their crippled starship and her crew to safety. In the real world of practical filmmaking and writing, the Enterprise A was the escape from the corner Harve Bennett and the producers had written themselves into. The Enterprise had been destroyed in the search for Spock, wholly unnecessarily in my opinion. And as Star Trek without the Starship Enterprise was unthinkable, a second Enterprise had to be brought into being. It seems no one thought to dream up a plausible explanation for where this Enterprise A had come from. Its dramatic appearance at the end of the voyage home was there to add some feel-good to a film already rich in humour and warmth. And it worked. <laughs>